The most valuable asset that you can have in the NFL is the number one overall pick. And thankfully for the Chicago Bears, that's exactly what they possess. They also have the ninth pick. So you've got two picks in the top nine. No second round pick, of course, because of the Montez Sweat trade. Not that anyone's complaining about that because Sweat ended up leading the Bears in sacks despite playing in what was it, nine or 10 games with them. The Bears, they have the 75th pick and the 122nd pick. So only four picks. That's not a lot to work with. But for Chicago, I do think they're going to end up trading down to get more assets. And I think it's going to be with the Bills because the Bills traded Stephon Diggs to the Texans. And there's been reports that they are looking at a receiver. Now, if the Bills were to trade up to number nine, they'd be able to get a receiver and they have a second round pick. They have their first and their second next year. I don't know if the Bears would get a first round pick if they got 28 a first and a second. I mean, Ryan Poles just build them a statue right now. That would be an insane haul. But I do think that a team is going to jump up to number nine. It might not be for a receiver. It could end up being for an edge. Maybe it's, uh, for example, like a Jared Verse, right, out of Florida. We don't know exactly who it's going to be. It could even be a quarterback because you got to realize the Vikings are at 11, the Broncos are at 12, the Raiders are at 13. Now, what do all those teams have in common? They need quarterbacks. So a team technically could jump ahead. I find it hard to believe that Poles would have a player on his board that he just has to have outside of Romo Dunze. He's the one guy in that type of range that I feel like you just can't pass on. But outside of that, I mean, maybe the Bears don't exactly have someone way higher than the other. So like, we'll run a quick mock here. Number one is going to be Caleb Williams at USC. We'll get in him in a second here. But at number nine, maybe it's Romo Dunze. If he falls there would be great. There's also going to be a Dallas Turner, right? I mean, if Joe Alt or Romo Dunze end up falling there, Malik Neighbors somehow randomly falls there, I do think the Bears would just stand there and take that pick. But realistically speaking, those type of players are going to be gone before the ninth pick. So the Bears have a unique position to where they can trade down and get assets. They might even be able to get a future second round pick, right? Like, would you guys do nine for 28, a second round pick and a future second round pick? Like, I feel like most Bears fans would do that. I get uh, having a top nine pick is extremely valuable and it's a lot of points. But if you can get more and more picks, it's only going to make you better because we've seen Ryan Poles be able to draft very well. I mean, the guy ended up getting the number one pick, which he's about to use on Caleb Williams. We know, of course, he drafted Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami in the second round. Very good physical type of corner, had one of the better rookie seasons of all defensive players. And of course, he did find some other players in the defensive interior that he likes. And uh, of course, going out there and drafting Darnell Wright, uh, he played with, of course, uh, Hendon Hooker at Tennessee. Poles is cooking. He had a lot of salary cap to work with. He doesn't have too much draft capital, but if you think about it, like anyone would rather have one nine and then two picks versus let's just have one through seven. I mean, it's not even debatable. So for Chicago, they just need to go out there and get that quarterback to build around. They're in a division that's extremely competitive. Like you have to understand that the Bears have to play against the Lions twice a year, the Packers twice a year, and the Vikings twice a year. And the Vikings, they've got as good of skill positions as it gets. Like the Vikings have the best skill positions in the NFL. The Vikings are putting themselves in a position to where they can get their franchise quarterback so are the bears the lions have theirs in jared goff and of course the packers have theirs in jordan love now the bears are doing their turn justin fields definitely represented the organization well he had his moments but he consistently could not read a defense and he held on to the ball too long and now the bears they go out there and what do they do they bring in keenan allen they bring in deandre swift they go out there they get gerald everett who's very good with the ball in his hands after the catch and of course, this defense for the Bears is its bread and butter. They go out there, they add in Kevin Byard, of course, coming over from, he was, uh, I think he was with the Eagles, right? In a midseason trade, he originally was drafted by the Titans back in 2016. He was a third round pick. So, I mean, he's a Pro Bowl level player. You add him to your defense, of course, and you pair him with Jaquan Brisker, who is one of the best strong safeties in football. Jalen Johnson, the best corner. Tyreek Stevenson, man, I, I thought he should have been in the defensive rookie of the year conversation. He probably had just as good of a year as Will Anderson Jr. But the thing for Anderson Jr. is that the Texans went from a terrible run defense to an elite run defense, and that was because of Anderson. So I'll give him that. But these I love these linebackers. The only issue with me in the Bears defense is what can you get outside of Montez Sweat? Because like Jervin Dexter Sr. showed promise in the second half. Zach Pickens has potential. Andrew Billings is, is solid. Demarcus Walker was solid as well, but I think he's more of a rotational guy. If the Bears can pair someone up front, it doesn't have to be an edge necessarily. It could be someone in the interior. Um, who that is is beyond me. I mean, maybe the Bears go out there and they get Byron Murphy, the second Ugum out of Texas. He would be good. He's incredible in the run game. I think the Bears just need a big body, someone that can prevent 
sweat from getting double teams and, and just make sure that he's able to go one-on-one -on -one more and get more opportunities but the bears i do think they trade down is it the 28 i don't know about that i, I do think the bears will trade down but i don't think they're going to trade down to the point where they're going to miss out on their guy so i think the bears this is just hypothetically speaking this is just my opinion like i'm not saying ryan Poles is looking at these guys but i think the bears will be looking at byron murphy i think they'll be looking at jared verse for sure i wouldn't be blown away if the bears did upgrade their offensive line because the thing with your franchise quarterback is is the most important thing is protecting him this is a very good tackle class jc latham amarius mims Olu Fushanu. I mean, you talk about the best pass blocking lineman in this draft. The Bears could add him in. I get it doesn't make any sense. Trust me, I'll be the first to tell you that. But if you add in talented football players, then nobody's going to complain, right? Because like Nate Davis, yeah, Nate Davis is good. He's very good in the run game, but he's not the type of player, of course, as some of these guys are being projected to be. And, and also, they might not even be day one starters. Like you can develop your young tackle. But at the same time, I will say the Bears have done a right who they 100% believe in for the future at right tackle. And at left tackle, Braxton Jones, yeah, he didn't have the best season last year. He was actually better before that, but he's still a young player. He's only, what, 25? Yeah, he's 25 years old, bro. He just turned 25 in March. So the Bears feel confident with this team. The roster's already shaped out to be very good. I think the Bears have as much talent on this roster as anyone else in the division the lions obviously make a strong case the packers are good the vikings are good but the bears they have everything that you need they have an elite defense they've got skill positions they've got an offensive line that's young with promise they've got swift they've got herbert roshan johnson a lot of teams don't have a backup running back as good as cool herbert now he is going into the final year of his rookie deal so i highly doubt he'll be back next season but i mean imagine walking into a situation to where you have a running back that went over a thousand yards that can catch the ball out of the backfield you've got two wide receiver ones DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. You've got Tyler Scott, who I know Bears fans like a lot. You've got the tight ends. You've got Shane Waldron, who turned Geno Smith basically from not a nobody, but essentially a backup that was supposed to lead the team to three, four wins to a Pro Bowl level player. I mean, and then don't even get me started on the defense. Nobody had more takeaways after the sweat trade. Nobody had, I'm not going to say sacks because I don't know if that's true. I think, the, uh, not the Eagles. Who am I thinking of? Who had the most sacks? Oh, it was the, it was the Ravens, right? I think the Ravens probably had more sacks, but in terms of interceptions, takeaways, it was the Bears, bro. I don't even think it was that close. I mean, they were just forcing so many interceptions. And the reason for that is because with Montez Sweat, the Bears were able to rush four. Something that a lot of people don't really talk about is Sweat. He made such of an impact that, okay, now Iberflus is only sending four defenders at the quarterback, and that means you're dropping seven back into coverage. And when the Bears had seven back in coverage, they were as good of a defense as anyone else. And that's why I do think the Bears are going to use a very high pick. I think it's going to be maybe even a day one pick even if it's 28 i wouldn't be too shocked if it's some sort of edge or guy up front but they're going to bring in someone to just bolster this defensive interior because the only weakness for the bears is honestly their defensive interior like it's not even necessarily bad because Jervin dexter senior i know bears fans like him a lot and he, he might even end up starting but they're just not as much talent as there could be especially playing in a division that is going to be throwing the ball a ton the lions i would say the lions are more of a run first team of course i mean they like to give it to their running backs but they also can throw the ball we, we know that and then the packers certainly can throw the ball and then the vikings are going to be a team that with those skill positions are going to throw the ball 